gentlemen, my name is James Williams. I'm a consultant instructor with uh, Combative Concepts in unarmed combat, edged weapons, weapons retention, takeaway. What we want to do to start today is understand the system that we're dealing with. The system that we're dealing with is a human being. Okay? Human beings have certain attributes okay, and certain peculiarities. We're going to learn how to utilize both those things in our combative situation. One of the first things we have is how human beings interact with gravity, okay? immutable law of gravity. As a biped, two-legged, human beings are basically unstable. Okay? If he moves forward, he has to replace a leg that's non-existent in order to stay balanced. Backwards, the same way. You don't have to make someone fall to the ground by hurling them to the ground. Gravity will take care of that for us. Okay? It's a couple inches below the navel, a couple inches in, depending upon how large the person may be in the middle. The fact that a person needs to be a triped and is not their bipeds, and they have a center of mass with the immutable law of gravity allows us to unbalance them in many peculiar ways. Okay? Many peculiar ways. So if Eric gets a real strong karate stance, Okay, I need to be able to see certain things immediately and eventually learn to do this without having to look for them. He's got a foot here and a foot there. If I push down the line, he's very strong. Okay, I can lean on him all day long. Okay. If, however, looking at where his feet are placed, I draw a line between his ankles and I go out the length of his tibia at a, in a triangle to that, he is not strong at all. Same forward, be strong. Same forward. If I pull him straight forward, he's strong. If I push through his line of strength, he's strong. A little rotation, he's no longer strong. He has to replace that leg. If someone grabs me, okay, both hands real, real firm, I can choose this paradigm, okay, real strong. Get, get your feet set, okay. I can choose a paradigm like that. Okay? I can knee him, I can elbow him, I can headbutt him. I can fight with him about it. Okay? Now, that takes a little bit of time. And depending upon the other person, their resolve, their physical genetics, how much experience they've had at this, how successful I'm going to be. We've all seen people who could probably just pick us up like that and throw us back on the ground. An elbow in the, uh, elbow in the temple is just going get to them, get them lit up. So we don't choose... We don't choose to look at it like that. We don't choose to feel that we can always dominate people by force and by leverage, by mental attitude, that an all-out offense is going to be the best way to do things. So we might take a paradigm like this. He grabs me, and he's real firm. And my feelings are, I'm not going to fight about this. I'm not going to be a castle and have to defend a point in space. It could be any point in space. Why don't I change the point in space? So from my elbow to my wrist, because there's two bones here called the ulna and the radius, he's got control. From the wrist down, he doesn't control that. And everything else from the elbow up, he also doesn't control. So why don't, instead of fighting this, why don't I change my physical relationship with him? We call this skeletal relationship. So I'm going to change my physical relationship. I'm going to leave this hand like it's just a point in space. I'm going to come and step through. At this point of coming, stepping through, notice how his body is being gathered. We'll call this gathering because now I have control of his center of mass, his center of gravity. We call this gathering. And in a very unsophisticated way, you could step through and trip. But for us, I'm merely going to bring a hip back. Okay? When you throw someone depending upon the situation you're in and what you're attempting to accomplish, and to some degree, whether you're armed or not, you'll throw them either close or far away. In an empty-handed situation where I don't want him to be able to get up and, and repeat an attack more wiser than he was the last time, I want to throw him close so that I can deal with it. I want to finish the show right here. So what, I'm, what I did here is as he came over, I threw him close. 
I retained his uh, wrist. I placed my knee against the humerus bone just above the elbow. This makes the arm then no longer bendable. It's like a rod. If I place my weight straight down, it fixes it. Okay? It fixes it. As I bend the knee in, it starts to hyperextend the joint. The whole philosophy is don't fight for that position in space. The person has a hold of you, let him have that piece, work everything else. If he's punching or kicking or, or a knife thrust at you, redirect, move your body, but don't fight for that position in space. Okay. Combination of something might be, say he's punching, I redirect, I gather the body here, got the elbow locked, see how his body now is mine, okay, I can throw it. Okay. In a training situation, you throw, you allow the person to roll. In a combative situation, they don't get to roll. Okay, it's designed to place them in a position where they are severely injured by the time they get to the ground. Both by the application of the technique, dislocate the elbow, and by the throw, where they land on their head or their shoulder. We're going to allow him to have whatever he grabs, whatever it is that he grabs. Okay? He might be grabbing up my collar and my arm. Okay? And it seems like this is real difficult. Okay? I'm under tension. He's grabbing my collar and my arm. Well, if I allow him to have those pieces that he's grabbing, in fact, at this point, it's real simple for me. Okay? I can drop him backwards because he needs a leg there that he can't place. I could just come up to here, roll my hips through, take him out. This gets to be rather difficult. Understanding a breath and proper breath control puts us into the next aspect of Aiki Jiu Jitsu that's essential, to be able to be relaxed under duress. The reasons why, if he grabs me and I choose to make myself rigid and strong and conflicting and he moves my arm around, he's moving me around. He now has control of my center of mass. This is bad. We want control of his. We don't want him to even be able to feel where ours is. So in the relaxed paradigm, if he grabs and he begins to move me like this, he still has no control of my center of gravity whatsoever. And in the process here, has actually placed himself in jeopardy that he may not even be able to feel initially. That's where the throws, that's where the joint locks come from. You're soft not because you're kind-hearted or you don't want to injure somebody. You're soft because they can't tell where you're coming from. They can't feel it. They will give you okay, the means to throw them. They will give you the opening, the body part, the throw. They'll give that to you. The last thing that we really want to set up for ourselves to keep this relatively simple, this is a very complex art that takes a long period of time, is how we use our eyes. We do not focus down. We do not focus our vision. You kind of get the picture? What can you see? A little point I'm going to be striking and nothing else. My whole body's focused for one little one little movement here that may or may not have value to the whole situation. My brain is in a conscious mode. Conscious mind is not real smart. Seven variables, plus or minus two. Sit down for a few seconds and think in a room entry how many variables. A little more than nine, I think. Ninety, nine hundred. The only way you can handle that properly is subconscious mind. The way to access the subconscious mind is to relax your eyes. If I'm opposite another person, and that's the, the system I'm going to be dealing with, I'll direct them at the middle of the chest. But I don't look at the middle of the chest. That's where they're directed. And in the process here of looking or directing my eyes and relaxing them, I can see everybody way over here. I'm conscious of all of this. I never look at, at the weapon. The Japanese had a saying, you see the sword that kills you. 
you want to be successful in a defense, defend a place that's not being attacked. Okay, so we use that. We believe that. So if he's attacking this space and I'm doing stuff like this, see the position? Yeah, the first one's out of the way, but where am I going to be from everything else? Okay, he's got punch to the stomach. He's got all kinds of stuff. I'm defending a place that's being attacked. So what I want to do is, if I'm not going to absolutely change the place that's being attacked, I will change where his attack is being applied so that I'm no longer the focus of the attack. Does that make sense? So that's where we're coming from. Works really well with guns, because you don't want to be in that impact zone trying to defend against it. You want to be somewhere else. If he's presenting a hand or a fist or whatever, rather than trying to knock it away, which, as I hit hard and he hits hard, the impact also reaches my center. Well, that's not good. I don't want to be off balance at all. And I always want him to be off balance. So if he's going to come in on that way, I'm going to what we call cam or redirect combination of the two. As he's coming up the leg of the triangle, I am reaching down the leg of the triangle, paralleling his motion. As I do that, if I reach towards his chin, it cams him away. Now, cam versus push. What takes place if I push, I'm applying pressure in a linear fashion here. He can be relatively strong because he can push directly back against it. A cam applies pressure in a continuing arc that's hard, hard to push back against. There's no real peace. You guys all look like you all lift weights. If you're down there doing bench press, it doesn't feel too bad. How about if there's Little guy at the end taking that bar, moving around just a little bit. Okay? It becomes real difficult, right? The muscles, where do I push? How can I do this? There's a lot of weight here. So this, how, this confuses. He never feels that this is taking place. But you're controlling his center by doing this. I'm never going to be in a position of when he punches, never going to be in this position. I'll be in a position of, okay, now see where that places me. Okay, as long as I stay nice and tight to him, I can throw him on the ground from here. Okay? I can get a compliant arm lock or something from this position. At this point, of course, you can see a throw to a break. Okay? Because his elbow is jeopardized here. And as he comes through, okay, now we back that off a little bit because that's real bad on an elbow. But the reality on that would be that there's a broken elbow there and a throw at the same time.